Greetings in the name of Jesus. It's such a, a privilege that's been given to me by Reverend Dr. Stephen Francis. And I just want to thank Pastor Stephen, Pastor Angeline, for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Once again, it's been a while, and I'm setting my, set, sending my greetings from Singapore. Me, my wife, Crystal, and our baby, Shiloh, sends our greet, greetings. And again, we also want to give the good news. We're expecting another baby that is coming soon in March. We're expecting a second child to be born. Thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for all the support. And we miss all of you. We miss hanging out with you and we miss fellowshipping with everyone back there in the United States. We wish we can visit very soon, if God willing. So I just want to thank God for this opportunity for Jesus My King Church Shelby to have me speak today. And I just, today I just have a message from God that I ask the Lord, Lord, what should I share? When Pastor Angeline asked me to record this message and give to the U.S. church, and the Lord spoke to me, he said, tell them how to overcome through their mind. So today I'm going to speak about how do you overcome the devil? How do you overcome your flesh through your mind? Many times we think, or rather we always we are accustomed to thinking that when I overcome things, it must be the devil. It must be spiritual things. And let's not forget, and I want to remind all of us, let us not forget that when you overcome, it's not just your heart, but you need to overcome your mind as well. For our mind has a constant battlefield going on. So today I want to speak about this and let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for today is the day that you have made and we will always rejoice and be glad in it. Father, help us to focus on the things that you've given to us, Lord Jesus. Father, anoint your servant as your servant releases the word and anoint this time, Father. May your presence be in this very sanctuary as your servant preaches your word. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for the sanctuary you've given to us that we can worship you as who you are. Father, open up the hearts and the ears of your people as they listen to your word. Bless this time, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, before I share the topic of overcoming through your mind, I just want to read a scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verses 1 onwards, it says here, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of di difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. You know, church, I just want to, before we go in depth with the word, to remind us that in the last days, the enemy is working very, very hard. The enemy is working to capture our minds, capture our hearts, and eventually capture our bodies. Because we must understand that everything starts with an idea. Everything starts with an information. So that's why the Bible is warning us, avoid this kind of people. For information comes from people. Amen. So church, we need to identify where are all these information coming from and who are the people who's releasing the information. Because we need to discern, especially in the last days, whether we're receiving the right information. That's why the Bible is, again, warning us today. And I want us to be very, very careful and mindful. The Bible speaks about the mind to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Means that I do not just love God with my mind, with my heart. I do not just love God with my body and with my emotion. I also love God with my mind. What does it speak? It speaks about your imagination. It speaks about your meditation. It speaks about your aspiration. So I want us to 
understand this today, that God is speaking through our minds. And a lot of times we don't worship God, we don't express our hearts before the Lord because your mind is against you. Your mind is against the Spirit of God. It is not renewed as what the Bible says. That's why the, the Bible is clearly saying, but having the appearance, even Christians, even religious people, God is warning that some people may be having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. Which means, church, there are people who are just talk, but there's no power being released over them. So today we need to review ourselves. How is my Inner men worshiping God, serving God. Because the, we are in a battlefield today. We're, we're fighting every day. And especially today, there's issue with the Palestinian and Israel war going on today. And people are trapping the people of God, whereby saying, why are you not supporting this? Why are you supporting that? Why are you supporting terrorism? And it's crazy. May I suggest to us today to keep our mouths shut and pray, Lord, bless Israel, bless the people in Gaza that they'll be free from harm. Because the more we talk, the more empty we become. So church, I want to encourage us as we are quietly praying and asking God for answers and to free people from, from being captive, you know, let's let's begin to worship God and to trust God. Because the Bible says, King Jehoshaphat, when the, the people around, or rather the kingdom, another kingdom, is attacking the, the, the Israel. You know what, what the Lord gave him? The counsel the Lord gave King Jehoshaphat is worship. Put the worshipers in front. Put the worshipers at the, at the very forefront of the battlefield to sing the praises of God. You know why? Because God is a mighty God. He's the God of victory. And he wants King Jehoshaphat and Israel to focus in the God of victory. And because of that, you know what? They won the battle. And we know, and we know the story. That when they focus on God, they won the battle. So, but you know, church, before winning the battle, the battle always starts within. If we do not win the battle today, we will not win the battle tomorrow. I was just giving counsel to one of the guys whom our church reached out from the neighborhood and he came here. He is having depression and is going through things in life and he's having a hard time uh, uh, getting a job permanently and, and, you know, he's shut in at home. And I, I sat down and talked to this man, this gentleman is a, who is, has a very good spirit. And he asked me, Pastor, how should I overcome? How should I go through this when I'm always afraid? You know what I told him? The Bible says, worry about, to, do not worry about tomorrow. For God says, do not worry for I am with you. And you know, church, that very counsel, God revealed something to me. If you can overcome the problems today, you'll overcome the problems tomorrow. For example, God wants you to start a prayer group, or rather, God wants you to be consistent in prayer. And you're asking God, Lord, I want to be anointed. I want to be strong in my faith. I want to be a worship leader. But it starts today. Your discipline today is your victory tomorrow. Amen. That's why a lot of us are struggling because, you know, we don't know how to overcome daily. What is God telling you today? What is God teaching you today? What is God asking you to do today? Because the more you overcome the day's work, the more you'll overcome tomorrow's work. Today's breakthrough is tomorrow's breakthrough. Amen. And the, the devil knows the devil knows, my brothers and sisters, that when you fail today, you will fail tomorrow. That's why the devil is so focused on you each and every hour. When you wake up in the morning, sometimes the devil will say you're not good enough. Sometimes when you go to work, you make a mistake. The devil will tell you you're not good enough. Sometimes husband and wives fight. The devil will say, see, you're not good enough. That's when the devil will try to discount you and disqualify you from the calling God has for your life. So today, church, I want to speak to you that God has a plan for each one of us today. And I want to strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that we're not just walking by our words, but we're, we're walking by the words of the King. 
that when we declare what he says, it is what it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just continue reading the scripture. And then from verse 6 of the same chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says here, For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women. And we see all these things are happening even in colleges today, that, that the devil is after our children, especially the weak ones, the women and even the sons today. The devil is capturing them. It's crazy, the things that is going on today. Therefore, we need to pray. And it says here that burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. That's why young people are finding it hard to come to church and come before the Lord because they are very burdened by sin. Thinking that I'm too sinful to enter the presence of God, but that's a lie from the enemy. And I want to encourage us, especially parents, even though your children are going through struggles in life, remember, Jesus did not give up on you. Amen. As he did not give up on us, we will not give up on our children. As long as we must live, not on our watch, our children shall be saved. Can I hear, can I hear an amen? Our children shall be saved. Verse 7, always learning and never able to arrive at the knowledge of truth. And we've been hearing this in the Western uh, Hemisphere and a Western counterpart from Singapore. We are from the East. What are they saying? Even today in Singapore, it's happening. What people are saying, it is my truth. I believe so and so. I believe that this is my identity. And later we'll talk more about that, how the devil captures the heart. And we, and, and the people today, they lose the essence of truth. What is truth? People don't know. They will say my truth, but that truth is lopsided. It is not the truth from God. And I want us today to be very strong in the Lord. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth, men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all as, what, as was that of those two men. So church, again, whatever the devil is doing, it will not last. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a hope that we are aiming for and the hope of glory that awaits us, that whatever the devil is doing today, it will not last forever. Jesus is the God of victory. Hallelujah. And what, I'm just reading this today because these are the battles that we're going on and, and we are facing each and every day, especially our children. So I want to encourage parents, be relevant. Don't, don't just talk about uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, what's going on. No, no, be relevant. Know what's the struggle today. Know what they're going through today so that we can help them, not just advise them, walk them through so that the glory of Jesus will be revealed. So today I'm, I'm sharing about overcoming through your mind. Our minds is constantly bombarded with many things, worldly things, as we are in the world, either we are living in a constant battle within or going along with the flow as the world dictates. You know, a lot of us, sometimes we struggle within or some of us are just going with the flow. Whatever the world um, brings me, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. But that's not how the disciples of God should be. We should follow the instructions of God. You know why? Because God is a loving father. He will not abandon us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. This is who our God is. People may lie, but God is not the God who lies. Jesus did not say that when we believe in him, our minds will autonomously be sanctified. However, he said to love the Lord your God with all your mind, according to Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. What is the first commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Today, I'm focusing on the mind because your mind is part of your spiritual walk with God. Does that mean to love him intellectually? In this message, we will learn together how does our mind participate in our walk with God, which includes our body, soul, and spirit. So I want to go to the first point. Our mind is part of our spirituality. 
what is in your mind. Amen. That's why the devil, you see, how, how the devil works today is capturing the minds of the young people through what? Social media. We've talked about this many, many times and even in, in our church in Singapore and even when I went to Philippines for a mission trip. These, is, these are the struggles of the young people. What? Mindlessness. Somehow they are so connected with their phones, but disconnected to the world that is present around them. They're so connected to, to, to the internet where they know what's going on around the world, but they're so mindless of what is going on around them physically. You know why? That, that's the strategy of the devil. Put you away from what is today. You see what the devil is doing? That... You, you don't overcome today's problems. That's what the devil is doing, stealing away today's worth of your life. Do you know every single day of your life is so worth it to the Lord because he died for you. He died for you and me. His blood was shed for you so that you may live. Every day, Every day's worship, you know, is so worth it for God to listen. Pastor Stephen just preached the other Sunday that our position is even higher than Lucifer before he fell. You know, Lucifer was the worship director of heaven. He comes close to the presence of God, but because of pride, he came tumbling down. All of us know this story. But you, you, you see, because of Jesus, his blood was shed for you and I, therefore, we are closer to Jesus and we know more about Jesus than the devil. You can hear an amen. And I was very encouraged when Pastor Stephen said this because he said that our worship is so precious to God that even angels, their, their worship is even something that is lesser than the worship of humans. You know why Jesus died for you and I? Jesus did not die for angels. And I want us to consider this, that every day you live is something fresh, precious in the eyes of God. You are so precious in his eyes. You are not just a nobody, you're somebody in heaven. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. So number one, our mind is part of our spirituality. Many of us disqualify our minds out from the realm of God, which contradicts what our Lord Jesus said in his word. Yes, we must believe from our hearts. However, our mind must agree to what our bodies may do. Worship, prayer, evangelism, and all of that. You see, church, if your mind does not agree with the counsel of God, you will not do what he commands you to do. Amen. So many of us know the truth. Many of us want to follow God, but it's your mind. It's, it's not settled with the word of God. So today we will free that mind. Amen. We will pray that the Lord will set our minds free for his glory. It says in Romans 12, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. What does it say? It says here, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Church, we can follow Jesus, but if we don't allow him to, be, to transform our minds, to become like him, to be renewed in the mind, you know what's going to happen? Our hearts may agree, our soul may agree, your body even may agree, but your mind is not there. Therefore, worship might not be acceptable to God. That's why it says here that by testing, Amen. Because your mind is thinking and processing, you may discern what is the will of God. What is good, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So let me ask us today, is your service to God, your offering to God, is it good? Is it acceptable or is it perfect? What is, what is a perfect sacrifice? Jesus is a perfect sacrifice. When we know this, we will 
definitely figure out that when I worship God with a humble heart, knowing that it is all by His grace and I'm walking by faith regardless of what I've been through before, regardless of what I'm going through today, I will depend on the blood of Jesus shed for me to serve Him and to worship Him. Amen. Because it is not by our good works, but it is by the blood of Jesus that allows us to come before him to offer a perfect sacrifice. Can I hear an amen? We present ourselves to God first by sanctification, followed by our thought processes, and then our actions. We are created as creative beings made in the image of God. Therefore, we do things with much thoughts in our minds. In some occasions, we tend to be mindless in God's presence. For example, when we experience the unknown in the spirit, we tend to say the word, I do not know what happened. I say, I remember saying this before in our church in the U.S. I was taken over and didn't know what's going on. I am not, I'm not saying that all of these are false. In fact, we rejoice when we have such experience, which means we have the right to ask. And nonetheless, we sometimes forget that we are disciples, which means we have the right to ask and to process whatever we experience in the spiritual realm. You know, on the other hand of what I'm saying, overcoming, on the other hand, you see, when I am walking with Jesus and God allows me to experience spiritual things, as we encounter Jesus, do not let this experience go by by saying, wow, that is a good experience. No. As a disciple, my mind should process. What do I mean by that? Asking the Lord, Lord, I've experienced this today. Can you teach me more when you come? When the Lord comes to you, when the Lord manifests in such a splendor of his glory, how do we process that when we go back home? That is very important as a disciple, as a student of the Holy Spirit. How do I process the move of God? So therefore, if I know how God moves, then I know what he loves and what he desires. So as a worship leader, as a pastor, or as a servant of God, when I know who my father is, the way he comes, there Therefore, as a son, it is my responsibility to do things on his terms. A lot of times, uh, we a lot of times we we tell the Lord, Lord, I will, I'll, I'll come just as I am. True for new believers, but for the matured sons, we ask the Lord, Lord, how do you want me to serve you today? You know why? Because we are servants. The servant does not tell the master. Or rather, or rather, yes, the servant does not tell the master how he should serve the master. But the master, on the other hand, must or rather should tell the servant how the servant supposed to serve him. Are we understanding this? Because when we do so, you know what? The glory of God comes. The glory of God comes. You know why? God feels welcome. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool which is the place for me that you are preparing. Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, remember that scripture? In the next scripture, in 1 John 4, 1 to 6, it says here, it says here, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God for many false prophets have gone out into the world by this you know the spirit of God how do you know that it is by the spirit of God by testing testing how do you test you don't aimlessly test for something. You know, researchers, doctors, and all these people, they don't just assume that this is correct. They don't just assume this, this particle is correct, that formula is correct. They will go through different series of tests. And therefore, they can postulate this is correct. Amen? From an idea to a theory to a postulate, it is absolute. Okay, we got it right. How come in the house of God, a lot of us are clueless of what God is doing? And sometimes you are misled by many false prophets and even false people who say God speaks to them. 
Amen. I have experiences in my life where I heard the voice of God. I thought so, but the Holy Spirit says that is not God. Therefore, I rebuke the voice. I've even experienced in my prayer time an angel come before me, showing the glory and leading me to a gate. And the Holy Spirit says, this is not my angel. And I rebuke this looking angel. And this looking angel suddenly turned into a demon, a beast looking. And it fled after I rebuked it. And I asked the Lord, Lord, why did you show me this vision? And God is saying, because the angel of light is present. The angel of light is here to deceive my people. So therefore, church, I want to challenge you. Test the spirits. Test what God is doing in your life. And it always starts personally. Excuse me. It always starts in your inner life. What is God telling you today? Perhaps we, we don't know what God is doing because we don't obey what God is telling you. Amen. So I want, I want to encourage us that when God speaks, just simply follow and see what God does. You know, church, I know you've heard about this story, but just for me to personally tell our family in in Jesus My King Church, Shelby, you know, before coming to Singapore in 2021, when Crystal and I were with you and we we really truthfully enjoyed our fellowship and even sometimes my wife and I will talk about each and every one of you missing the fellowship and Spicy Uno and all these fun things that we do together. You know what, what the Lord told myself and Crystal in prayer, the Lord commanded the both of us to come back to Singapore to strengthen what remains. And that's what we did. We came back and we labored and, and, and did the work of God here. What God promised us in, back in the U.S. when we were praying and asking God, the Lord spoke to me. He said, because of your obedience... I'm going to bless you with a baby, and and I'm going to bless you with a house. No more you will stay somewhere renting. No more you will stay with people. I will bless you with a home of your own. And to me, when I was, um, I'm, I'm just simply receiving what God says. And me and Crystal look at each other. We don't have enough savings. We only have something in the bank and all of that. And when we came back to Singapore, Look at this story, and God provided for everything, exactly everything, my, my friends. God provided simply everything, from the pregnancy to the childbirth. And you know, my doctor, Christos Gaini, he is a Christian and gave us a massive discount because he found out I'm a pastor, and I asked this doctor, and he said, I'm giving you a discount because this is my ministry. I want to bless men and women of God, missionaries who serve the Lord, and that is my ministry. So our second baby, when we visit him, you know what? He does not ask for any more consultation fees. It's free of charge. When we go to the doctor and see you know, the baby inside Crystal's womb, we don't pay a cent. But we do pay for, for med- medications and, and the use of the facility, but we don't pay him any single cent. And I just want you to know that God is faithful. Secondly, when the Lord told us to have a house, Crystal and I did not know how to have a house. But when I called Pastor Stephen, because I received counsel from other people, it's too expensive. Why not save your money when you go back to the U.S., buy a house over there? And Pastor Stephen reminded me on the phone. He said, who is your counselor? And I told Pastor Stephen, my counselor is the Lord Jesus Christ. And Pastor Stephen said, just follow. The Lord says, buy a house, buy a house. So by faith, Crystal and I ventured into buying our own property, our own house. Cut the long story short, by December in 2022, we've moved into our new place. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. And I remember hearing from Brother Jim, you know, the the house story, and some of you hearing your testimony, it encouraged us. And now God bless us with a home. And that is a testament of God's goodness and faithfulness when we obey Jesus. Amen. And I am a living testimony of that just by following. But I I want us to focus on this. 
if my mind did not follow, because my mind, you see, my mind did not really believe that I can pay because I don't have a lot of money. But you know what God says? Get, get it done. And you know what? Crystal and I just received blessings from brothers and sisters, and we have enough money to renovate our new home and praise the Lord. If you want to see the new house, come to Singapore. We will welcome you. We'll have dinner. <laughs> praise God. So I just want to share this testimony to encourage us that our God is faithful. However, we need our mind to agree with God. Hallelujah. And it says over here, by this, you know, the Spirit of God. So in the, in the testimony that I share with all of us, that when my mind agree with what God is saying, and I'm testing whether I heard from the Lord and truly I heard from God, then God provided for me. And even, you see, even house, the first house we viewed, the Lord said no. The second house we viewed, the Lord said, do you like this house? And I told the Lord, I like this house. And you know what God told me? This house belongs to you now. Isn't God good? Amen. Let me continue reading from 1 John chapter 4. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh is from, or rather has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Amen. I'm not going to share more about this, but as we are watching the news, reading things in the media and all these things, I think we know that there are people who say Jesus is not Lord. People say Jesus did not die. Somebody else died. That's a lie from the enemy. What evidence do we have that Jesus died on the cross? What evidence do we have? When we read the accounts in the Bible, how many witnesses saw the ascension of Jesus? There were 500 people who saw Jesus ascend to the Father. And many more witnesses that we read from the Bible. Amen. So there's many, many people who saw Jesus. Let me continue reading. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. You have overcome. Amen. Amen. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Can I hear an hallelujah? They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. You know, church, if what we speak is very worldly, that means we are still part of the world. If our words speaks, faith means, you know, God is working in us and we are part of the kingdom of God. That's why, church, we must now identify or rather have a separation. Do we belong to God or we belong to the world? Verse 6, we are from God, therefore, whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. There are some people, no matter how we preach the truth, no matter how we preach God, they just don't want to listen. Because you know why? The world is so much into their system. The world has creeped in into their spirit man. So therefore, we cannot win them by speech. You know what? We can win them through prayer. The more we pray, the more we release God in them. You know what? Somehow, Every chain will be broken. Every chain will be broken. Every yoke will be broken. Amen. From this passage, we can see the involvement of the mind before we act upon a spiritual experience that we encounter. Amen. When we encounter God or we encounter the realm of the enemy, your mind needs to work. But it should be in the submission, under the submission of God. Amen. It is not to create doubt, but to be wise in our walk with God as a mature sons and daughters. This is not to make us intellectuals. On the contrary, to be childlike before the Heavenly Father. It takes our will to be childlike, waiting on God, doing His will, and obedience to His call. You know what? Being Having a childlikeness is something our mind need to agree. 
Do you believe that? You know, when, when there are things that are so complex, relationships, your future, the things that we go through, a lot of times it's so complex, but God is asking us, just be a child. Just be childlike in your mind. Just come and believe. You know, it takes so much from our brain cells to believe what God says, you know. And, and the fact of the matter is, I want to I conclude that, that, that fact that when your mind is subjected to God, you know what? Everything within you will just follow. That's why David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Which means, when I follow God, it's not just one portion of my being. That includes my mind as well. Amen. The second area that I want to talk about in this topic is Areas the devil access the mind. And it's very important and critical in this season that we are aware how the devil attacks us and how the devil comes, you know, because the more we know, the more we can safeguard and ask the Holy Spirit to guard our hearts. That's why David prayed, Lord, give me an undivided heart, an undivided spirit, and guard my heart. That's why, you know, the more we are aware of what the devil's strategies are, then we can safeguard ourselves and we know how to pray and we know the tendencies and the triggers that the enemy use against us. Because sometimes, you know, when God asks us to serve, when God asks us to run, you know, the devil knows the triggers, trigger points in our lives. What to trigger, tr perhaps trigger your husband or trigger your wife, the things that they say that you don't like and the next day you're supposed to serve and it ruins your mood to serve the day or your children will trigger you about something or your workplace or your good friends. And these are the trigger points that we also need to be aware so that we can serve God without interruptions. Get what I mean? So in this second area, five senses are our body. The devil tries its best to access our five senses. You know what's the five senses? I'll talk about more of that later. In order to capture the mi our minds, because he knows that when our minds are imprisoned, we become fruitless, useless, and helpless in our own eyes. That's the thing that the devil does to make you useless, to make you fruitless and helpless you know when we are fruitless you know what happens our inner man suddenly just goes down and when we're helpless you know what your self-esteem goes down your confidence starts to soar down and low and when your confidence is low you know what happens i cannot serve because i'm not good enough i can't do this because i'm not good enough i can't do all these i can't play drums i can't play instruments or i can't serve i can't smile because you know there's many things that's going on inside of me and that's what the devil wants we ought to be God's watchmen, to wait upon God and to be wary of the enemy's attack. Our five senses are gateways which God can access and so as the devil. Hence, we need to be a watchman of our own bodies to be conscious of what we input in our minds. You see, Pastor Stephen and a lot of men of God will always call for the watchmen, intercede, Pray, do this, watch for the devil, watch that what the devil is doing, watch what God is doing. But you know, I want to encourage you today, before doing all these things, ask God, Lord, help me to watch my soul, to watch what's going on within me. Because you see, the more you're watchful of what's going on with your inner man and the things God wants you to do, you know what? You'll be a good watchman over your brother and your sister. You'll be a good brother's keeper. You know why? Because there's nothing inside hidden. You're, you're more, then you'll be more confident in ministering. Amen. So the more we watch over, in, in, in Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10 to 12, it says here, His watchmen are blind. They are all without knowledge. They are all silent dogs. They cannot bark, dreaming, lying down, loving to slumber. And that's what the devil is doing to our children today, losing what is in reality. And it's crazy because, you know, virtual reality is becoming real. 
you know, the metaverse where people will just wear their um, uh, virtual reality uh, glasses and whatever you call that, and they will be away from the reality. As if social media is not enough, you know, this is, this is the next wave that the devil will do. Lose your mind from reality and go to another reality you think you, you can be part of or, or you know, you, you belong. And you know what's crazy? In this metaverse that Facebook has done, you can buy properties online and sell it to other players. Sell it to other users. And it's crazy. It's not the first time that it happened. If you're a gamer, you know. Some games, um, open world games, you can buy properties and sell it to other gamers. And, you know, it's money and all of that. And what's, what, and what's worse, the Bible is saying God's watchmen are blind. And that's what the enemy is doing. Silent dogs, they cannot bark. Which, which means the purpose and plans that God has for you your functionality as a son of God, a daughter of God, is not functioning, dreaming, lying down, loving slumber. And some of us young people you're watching today, if you love to sleep more, be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. The dogs have mighty appetites. They never have enough, but they are shepherds who have no understanding. No understanding. They have all turned to their own way, each of his own gain. One and all. Come, they say, let me get wine. Let us fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow will be like this day, great beyond measure. That is what the devil is doing. Making the people of God slumber, enjoy today. Tomorrow will be the same without preparing themselves today for what comes tomorrow. Amen. That's what the devil is doing and keeps doing and working so hard. How about you? Are you working hard for the kingdom of God, for Jesus Christ? And you see, in this era, the devil uses technology as a medium of temptation in so many levels. What are the areas? Lust, promotion of sexual interest. The more you look at social media, the more less the girls are wearing. The more you look at social media, the less value people put on their bodies. Even today, you know, uh, there's many girls who will say and very proud, how much is your body count? For, for some of us, or rather some of you who are more advanced in years, body counts means how many men have you slept with? And they're so proud to say 8, 10, 11, 12. And that is what our young people are watching. And I want to tell you the truth that w the more you do it, the more you have sex with people beyond marriage, the more you put yourself down. Jesus died for you. Your body is precious. Therefore, take care of your body until the time comes that God gives you a partner. Amen. And these are the areas. And lust is not just about money. It's not just about sex. It can be money. It can be your own desire. Second is appetite. You must have the best food. You must have everything best. If not best, I don't want to live anymore. And that is what social media is promoting. Everything must be the best. I must look good. I must have the new iPhone. The new iPhone is, has come up again. iPhone 15. They will not end. <laughs> it looks the same to me. I don't know about you. Identity. Social standing. False idealism of life and relationships. Amen. This is what the devil is doing. This is, this is what the world is doing today. Showing what is what life should be. Showing what my truth is. Showing the lies of the enemy. And we have to pray today, Lord, set our children free for your glory. Amen. And I just want to show us this. The areas that the devil is accessing. Look at this. The five senses that the devil is accessing. Your eyes. What's the purpose of our eyes? To see. What's the intention of the devil? To make you blind, like what we've read in Isaiah chapter 56. To make you blind, to not see what God is doing. 
What is the spiritual function of your eyes to see? In Jeremiah 29, 13, when you call upon God, you will see him when you seek him with all your heart. The function of our spiritual eyes is to behold Jesus. Do you know, church, what you behold is what you become. The more you behold Jesus, the more you become like Jesus. But the more you be behold the world, you become like the world. You see? Some of us in your phone, if you have more pictures of yourself, means you behold yourself more. You'll become more self-eccentric rather than becoming like Jesus. Amen. That's why sometimes our worship is struggling because what I see is myself more than I see Jesus. And that's what the devil is doing. Number, number two, ears. Purpose is to hear. The devil's intention is to make you deaf of what is the truth, what the truth that God has put in your life, the, the, the voice of God, the scripture. The devil wants you to be deaf and don't hear what is right from what is wrong. What is the spiritual function of this to hear God? In John 10 verse 27, that all the sheep hears the voice of God. So therefore, church, as a son and a daughter of God, your right, you know, in America, we... We, you guys talk about rights, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, this is my right. And, we, and you guys are so good at this. Amen? Can I hear an amen in the U.S.? Even in Singapore, people are the same. What is my right? What is your right? I think it's everywhere. But the purpose of, of ears is to hear the voice of God. Amen? It's not about your right and my right. Your nose and tongue, to smell and to taste. What does the devil devil's intention gluttony not just food but greed i want to have everything i want to have this i want to have that and a lot of young people today they want to, especially in singapore they marry late because they want to have everything they want a house they want to have a car they want to have everything the money and then i want to get married by the time you're married in Singapore, struggle to have children. You know why? Because a lot of people in Singapore, they don't want to have children early and they want, they want the children to, to be late. So therefore, when their wombs are, are aging, it's harder to conceive. That's why for young couples, honor the timings of God. If God says, have a child now, have a child today. Don't wait because when you wait, your womb, ladies, I'm politely saying this, your womb does not wait for you. That's a sad fact. So therefore, if some of us are struggling, I release God's counsel before you. I release God's healing before you. I release God resurrection power on your womb right now to be open in the mighty name of Jesus that you will conceive. Even those who are watching online, if you're struggling to have a baby, I release the creative power of the Lord Jesus Christ to be upon your womb in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So what is the, 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 the devil's intention about your nose and tongue is to have everything, to have greed, spiritual function, to perceive and call upon God. The Bible says in Psalms 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Touch, to feel, to do creative work, right? The devil's intention to make you lazy, love, sleep, and slumber. That's what the devil is using. A lot of young people today are very lazy. Don't you agree, parents? A lot of young people don't want to do things. They want to be active, just want to be on their phone, just want to do games and all these things. And that is the attack of the devil against them. And we need to pray. Even, yeah, oh, even mature people, even people of age, we are addicted to news, addicted to our phones or TVs. We need to be delivered from that as well. What is the spiritual function? To feel God. Matthew 7, 7 to 11. So, you know, the more we know what the devil is doing, the more we can watch and pray and be delivered from it. Our choices are critical when walking with God, intentionally choosing, responding to him consistently, though it may cost us, as it 
is our acceptable act of worship to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice which will make us closer to God. The devil is at war to capture our minds using many tools, enticing us to lure us to its trap. As God's end-time warriors, our responsibility is to watch and pray and be alert against the attacks of the enemy. Last point that I want to share for us tonight is number three, mind and will equals actions. Romans 8, 5 to 8, it says here, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds in the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the things or rather on the spirit, is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Very clear in the scripture. Amen. If you set your mind on the things of God... You can please God. You can serve God. When you set your mind in the things of God, you are walking in the Spirit and you have life and peace. Church, if you don't feel the peace today, perhaps the half of your spirit man or one leg is in God and another foot is in the world, you cannot have both. You either choose the world or choose God. Choose today, because when you choose God, you have the Spirit of God and life. To be like Christ, I believe, requires a tenacious mind, as it is not a simple task to make ourselves be like Him. It requires reprogramming of our own system to His heaven's operating system. Amen? You know, when, when some of you know IT and some of you use computers and all of that, if you don't update your operating system, if you don't update your computer to the latest operating system, you know what? Your computer slows down. Amen. If you don't update to the latest server or the latest software, what happens to your computer? It slows down. And sometimes your storage is full. What do you do? Add SSD, add HDD, and all these things and then your computer will be faster and if it's slower add more memory those of you who does computer you know add more gig to the memory and your computer will be fast likewise when you walk with god your mind must be intact our mind must walk with god so that our mind can function amen our mind can function According to his statutes, our will and mind is as important as our heart, soul, and body. The devil will constantly taunt us and tempt us to reject God and submit to its worldly demands. On earth, we only have two choices, to follow God's demand or the devil's demand, which comes back to our power to choose and believe. You know, church, in worship, I've said this many, many times. When we worship God, it's not about how we feel, but it's about the truth of who God is. Amen? Because you see, the Bible never say, I worship God when I feel led to worship. The Bible never says that. When we, book, we, when we read the book of Psalms, it will always say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Bless the name of the Almighty God. Worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. It is not being led by the Spirit because God is God. Our problems make God look less. So church, I want to encourage you today. Ask the Holy Spirit, open my eyes, open my senses in the Spirit <clears throat> so that I can discern you as who you are. Amen. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live according 
loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life, the length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. God swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Therefore, church, choose life. You have a choice today, whether you'll choose the will of God or you'll choose your own will. You see, that's why your mind is part of your spirituality. Don't undermine what is inside here. Always focus. As what Paul says, submit your mind to God. The more it is submitted, the more you serve. You see, church, this is how God process, right? Even the world, vice versa. It will always start here, desire, your heart. When you watch something nice, wow, this is great. You know what happens when, when you see something great that you aspire to be? Your imagination will run and your emotions will be involved. For example, leading worship. When I was um, young, maybe a maybe, uh, teenager in my early teens, I never imagined that I lead worship because somehow I'm not confident. I, I practice more instruments and I can play piano, guitar, bass, and drums and all that, but worship leading is not for me. But... One day, when I was on the way to my school, I was listening to Chris Tomlin's song, Indescribable. You know the song? Indescribable, uncontainable. You said the stars in the sky and you know them by name. That song. And I started to cry. And I saw myself leading worship. And I saw it. And so what happened after that, I just, you know, it came to my mind. It came to my heart. And I'm emotionally seeing it and all that. And lo and behold, the opportunity came. And when that opportunity came, I said yes. Because you know what? When I saw that happen, before I saw this image in my mind, I was already worshiping in the room with my guitar, crying out to God and just loving to worship Him, but didn't know that one day God will use me to lead worship. Maybe that's you. Maybe God has put a desire in your heart. But what I want to encourage you today is don't let that dream die. Don't let that passion for God go underneath your feet. You know why? Because God will give you desire first. And what happens? Your emotion will come. Your mind will think. That's why your mind is very important because your mind will strategize. How will I plan on practice? If God calls you to be an evangelist, have it in your mind. Read the scripture about evangelism and then act upon it. Then your body will follow. Because you see, when your inner man is in line with your mind and everything that is within you, you know what? Your body will just follow autonomously. You don't even need to think. Your body will just do it. When it calls upon the day that God wants you to serve, that day is your day. Amen. Because you see, before David beat Goliath, you know what? He killed a lion and a bear. That's who David is. That's why he had this confidence. I can beat this guy. He's a bigger target than the lion and a, and a bear. So therefore, I know how to beat him. So therefore, church, do not underestimate your daily challenges, your daily struggles. Because your today's breakthrough is your tomorrow's breakthrough. Your today's blessing, you know what, will multiply tomorrow. So that's why the more you come close to God, the more you submit your mind to Jesus, you know what happens? Your body will submit to God, and you know what? Your hands will be fruitful. Hallelujah. And that's the purpose of God. That's why, church, I shared earlier, the devil wants you to be helpless. The, the devil wants you to be hopeless. The devil wants you to be fruitless. Do you want that in your life? And I want to encourage you today. As the devil is working so hard, working so hard to capture the, the generation today, let's ask the Lord, Lord, enable us so that we can imagine the things you want us to do. Because church, when our imagination is tainted by the world, you know what? Your interpretation of God will be according to the world. Some of us may ask, Lord, how come there's so many people dying? 
We don't know, but God knows in His goodness. We cannot measure the goodness of God with our own goodness because, because God is almighty. Amen. So church, I want to challenge us today. What should our prayer be? What should our prayer be? Amen. We need to think about this. What should my prayer be? How should I pray, Lord? How should I ask of you of what to do? And my conclusion today, our prayer must be, Jesus, fill my mind with all of you. The more God fills your mind, you know what? God inspires you to be creative. God inspires you to, to, do, to work an extra mile, to run an extra mile for Him. You know, when your mind is so full of God, you know what you're going to do? You're going to think, Lord, how should I serve you more? Amen. A lot of us sometimes are stuck. Lord, what to do? You know what? Your mind is not filled with God. Sometimes we say, I'm so filled with God, but our minds are so empty and filled with the world. And we need to be delivered by this. Amen? So that's why, therefore, all of us, you know, can be trapped by the enemy anytime, anyhow, and anywhere. God has given us his power, love, and sound mind. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, not what the devil is offering. Every man and woman who were overcomers in the Bible, were tried and tested by God and even by the devil. Our job is to stand our ground and make way for the king. In these last days, we should overcome in peacetime to be his future warriors filled with his spirit and the knowledge of God. You know, church, if we cannot overcome the devil today, when the last days in the end times come, how are we going to overcome the devil? If we cannot be brothers keepers today, how sure can we say that when that time comes, we can be trusted? If we cannot worship today, when the enemy somehow, God forbid, captures us, put us in prison, do you think you can still worship God? I don't know. But my job today is to be faithful my job today is to worship God. My job today is to be faithful of what God has given. So therefore, church, I want to ask you today, what is God entrusting you? What is God commanding you? And what has God given to you? Just to conclude, I, will, I always ask the Lord, Lord, these are the things you've given to me. Use it for your glory. 